You reckon the voice referendum will get up? I reckon Anthony Albanese has a lot of work ahead of him to help Australians understand what they're voting for. The question that Australians will be asked at this year's referendum is a very simple one. On the face of it, it's actually not a complicated question that we need to answer. A proposed law to alter the constitution to recognise the First Peoples of Australia by establishing an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice. Do you approve of this proposed alteration? But it raises the obvious follow-up of what the f*** is the voice and what will it actually well, do? it's a way for Indigenous Australians to consult on laws which will affect them. Something which we've been very good at stopping ever since 1788. We game the system by denying them the right to vote from that year all the way till 1962. Everyone thinks that changed at the 1967 referendum. The voting law was actually passed five years earlier. The constitutional change in 67 gave the Commonwealth the right to make laws for Indigenous people. Up until then, that power resided exclusively with the states, which took the task so seriously they entrusted the care of Aboriginal people with the same bureaucrats who monitored stocks of herring and prawns. 1967 also ensured First Nations people were counted in the census. After 40,000 years of living here, we allowed them to be considered citizens of Australia. So late to the party. Yeah, we always have been. It wasn't that long ago that Aboriginal people were banned from coming into the centre of Perth. Yeah, well, that's the point of the referendum, right? So First Nations can advise on future laws. Advise is the key word here. It's not an enforceable undertaking. If there's one thing politicians do well, it's ignore good advice. But there's a lot of laws to consider. Every statute pertaining to health and social welfare, employment, education, law, justice, property rights. Indigenous Australians have a nuanced interest in all of them. Some people will be asking whether we're voting for another layer of bureaucracy. I don't believe in government. I think that all government is a waste of taxpayer money. Asking whether the time and effort and money would be better spent on more teachers and nurses and cops in Aboriginal communities. Yeah, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Get it, and it won't mean we stop work at ground level. But the mechanics of how this will work and how it will genuinely help First Nations peoples needs to be explained in more than just a letterbox drop. Some people are going to use the lack of detail as a cover for voting no. A lot of them would probably vote no anyway, but it's easier to deny being racist if you can get constitutionally pious. It's justice, it's law, it's the vibe, and uh, no, that's it, it's the vibe. No politician will be able to explain how constitutional lawyers will reinterpret the language in 20, 30 or 50 years from now, and they will. Yeah, well, the PM's very emotionally invested in making this work. This moment has been a very long time in the making. He needs to explain things between now and the referendum and he needs to do it on a megaphone. For some people, it's the complete opposite. The underworld messaging app du jour is Threema, unofficially promoted as the world's most secure messaging app. Servers are in the Swiss Alps and the company behind it goes out of its way to not collect and store your data so it can't ever be put in a position to hand your data over to the cops. We first learned about this app in 2018 when former Olympic hero Nathan Bagley used it to try to import hundreds of kilos of cocaine into Queensland. Want to know the code name he used? Go on. Thunderbutt. <laughs> the app was also allegedly used to direct shipments of ice under the control of the appropriately named Joshua Tool, who apparently used the code name Smiley. Want to know who Josh's brother is? Mm -hmm. The New South Wales Police Minister. Oh. Freema is featuring in another drug case, this one out west. Anthony Colgrove is a former Comanchero turned professional gold plater. I love gold! Colgrove is said to have used the handle Django to try to acquire 10 kilos of MDMA and 5 kilos of coke through Threema. The deer silent. Colgrove's bid to remain unchained rests on his defence that he ain't Django. What's your name? Or at least that the cops can't prove he's Django. Oh, Django. I'm sure Anthony will be hoping even more that that defence holds water in light of Fink's bikey Brent Wrecker's final moments yeah, in jail. very grim. BJ, as he was known to friends, family and the gang crime squad, was a pioneer of the face tat trend emulated by so many today. His death four years ago in a Victorian jail is now the subject of a coronial inquiry which has just heard about his final days. And even by bikey, underworldy, gangstery standards, it's pretty dark. 
Recker died in the Ravenhall Correctional Centre in December 2019. He was there on remand for the bashing of a bloke who posted naked pictures of Recker's friend Tara Eggleston. The coroner has just heard of the bikie's multiple suicide attempts in jail and threats to slash up after a dental appointment was cancelled. When they threatened to move into another wing, he killed himself in his cell. Before he was a thing, Wrecker was the sergeant at arms for the Perth chapter of The Rock Machine and a central player in that club's war with the Rebels early last decade. Wrecker was at Cottesloe's OBH in 2011 when one of his mates threw Perth musician Andy Marshall out the window, killing him. And he was also a standover man. Not a very good one, to be honest. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. In 2010, he told two teenagers to pay him a couple of grand or he'd force them to videotape themselves beating up one of their friends. They didn't and instead went to the cops. BJ was jailed for three years for the cash or bash extortion plot. Got out on parole and was obviously confused by a court order expressly banning him from associating with bikies because he flew east to become the national president of one of the country's biggest gangs. He even did a New Ideas style photo shoot to let the world know about it. Yeah, but he didn't live long enough to see the gang's breakthrough music video. The feel good hit of the summer. Never lose faith in a thing. We think quick, eliminate all risks. That's real, by the way. A promotional video created by the Fink's outlaw motorcycle gang. Don't be acting overzealous when we roll them with the fellas. Have a go at Blondie. It's not quite Lennon McCartney, but with bombs like Never Lose Faith in a Fink. We hit pricks who think their shit don't stink. <laughs> it'll find its place in an anthology somewhere, I'm sure. If you don't rip our colours, then there's nothing you can tell us. I'm Ben Harvey. That's confidence. That's confidence. Once you know what you're doing, there's nothing stopping you. For all you need to know to get into the market with confidence, watch Trading Up at thewest.com.au.